Okay, how's everybody doing? So uh, what I want to do is I just want to talk about these two cars here and I want to show you maybe just a few segments of painting. Uh, no, I didn't cover the whole process because the cars that uh, originally uh, I carried over from Glover Road, but they were sort of half-baked cars in a way. Uh, not my best cars really, but some of my favorites. Isn't that funny? Uh, some of my favorite cars are not always my nicest looking cars. I don't know why that is, but um, I think some of you might be able to relate to that. So what I did was, is I used these two to kind of get back into it. Because when you've been out of certain phases of this hobby, like, like you can't just sort of breeze or, you know, uh, blow over any subject matter in model railroading without getting warmed up first, I find. It's, uh, things are distinct and uh, have different approaches to them and everything. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the side and uh, have a side view. I'll show you these cars um, and then I'll show you how I repaired the stirrups and how I just did a little bit of weathering and how I did the roofs. Uh, there's a way that I like to do roofs on these particular cars uh, that I find looks really cool um, and like the prototype actually in many ways with the rusted galvanized metal roof, okay? Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I'm going to pivot a little bit here on the River Road journey and story. And I just want to explain a couple of things, uh, maybe for those, well, for everybody, just to bring everybody up to snuff on things. So for those of you that have been uh, subscribed to the channel early on, you know the journey, how it began with Glover Road. If you scroll all the way back under videos on the main page, and it's free to subscribe, by the way, for those of you that are coming new to the channel it doesn't cost anything to subscribe and if you subscribe usually you'll get an uh, like announcements that you can comment uh, there are other benefits too most notably showing support uh, to the channel um, now I've been working on like uh, uh, River Road is the second layout so I, I did Glover Road first and I, these cars I'm going to talk about in a second came from Glover Road which is an indicator that I have not been able to paint or do cars for over two years. And I'm going to explain why and what's happening. I mentioned the tug as well because people have asked about it. So I've been into River Road now. I've just been going full guns for over two years. Okay. And my initial plan is, is that, yeah, I like to play with trains, <laughs> you know, like everybody. Um, I have my plans in place that are always open to revision. Uh, but I want to try to finish the layout or get it primarily done so that I can start designing and planning operations and doing other things. But there's so many more details and components that, that are going to be built into River Road uh, that are, is really like years, years and years of work yet to do. Um, this is a layout, the shelf layout genre, like that's the whole purpose of it, that you're going to lock in for at least five years or more and and pour yourself into a small character layout that you can manage you can afford you can move you can serve all the model railroad interests from electronics to painting weathering scenery track lane, like you name it like you all know how this hobby is how beautiful it is in terms of how this just from one day to the next like you'd be doing this and then you go ah okay i'm going to shove that aside and go do scenery you know it just goes that's why it's such a beautiful canvas but i haven't been able to paint on the canvas of trains for quite a while like i have all these trains that are unpainted unweathered i have locomotives that i want to work on people have asked about like even this tug for example and i'll just mention this quick in passing this has not been forgotten like, I don't forget stuff. I have a big plan, a, con a contextual plan, and this is part of it. But this is related to the barge slip and Section 1, and I'm just not on Section 1 right now. 
So I understand there was 10 parts done to it, but I put it on hold because I have other areas on this or within this hobby that I want to play with too and do. And you have to do this. If you're going to count the cost, like not financial, but time, commitment, inspiration, overcoming burnout, overcoming flatline times, getting reinvigorated, re-inspired, you have to change up to different subject matters on the layout or the or within the hobby you have to i mean i even have to do it right like i'm just like anybody else so i want to fix up some of these cars i want to weather some cars i have some locomotives that i'm got um, um i'm deep into an sd35 which i'm also documenting and covering that'll be a feature release uh, i may have mentioned an, end of november but i don't know it might be it might be the beginning of next year it just it just depends um I wish I had more energy and there were, you know, 60 hours to the day, <laughs> but time runs out and it's just the way it is. So, um, these two cars are Atlas cars. Okay. And I really like these cars. Uh, I think for the money, um, they're pretty darn good, but as you know, we lose the stirrups, especially if you, if, uh, like these cars have been main actors from Glover road through river road and they just got knocked off. And I want to update them, like um, uh, detail them more and, and touch up a little bit more paint. Like you can see I have graffiti on one side and then I have no graffiti on the other. So I can have the best of both worlds, okay? Now I want to upgrade these. Uh, so the stirrups, I'm going to use these Tishi train group stirrups. They're sort of a type of Delrin plastic. I'll show you how I'm going to mount those. Uh, then I'm going to... Well, they already have some of these KD, which I like the air hose angle cocks, but one I think broke off, but they're very nicely detailed. They're very similar material, like almost a Delrin type flexible material, but they will break though, uh, which I like about them and they're very nicely detailed. Okay. Now there are these two that I like for maybe cars of a different nature, but they're step style B and they're made of, uh, I believe they're copper or brass. Looks like they're copper actually. So, but you need enough material to drill for those into the bottom of the sill here, which I'll show you in a minute or two. And then there's these tangent scale coupler lift bars that I really like. These are a little uh, type two. Uh, there's four pairs. I've used a few already. They, they look really cool. They're a type of photo etch. So I'll probably mount some of those on these. Yeah, there's enough for two. Then there's these wheel sets, which are the um, tangent uh, all metal precision wheel sets, which are approximately 88 thou. I, they might be a little bit fatter than that, but not as fat as these ones at 110. Okay, and I believe these drop right in. Like I've been messing around quite a bit on my bench with, with Minter Mountain and these. I think they're pretty much identical. So I'll probably be changing those out as well. Okay. And then I have these smoke box graphics, which are these, um, you know, reflective safety stripes, which I'll probably add after all the paint is done. Because this is around 2010-ish. Like these cars go way back, obviously, but these are in there. You know, they, they cross the passage of time over several decades on class one, class two, etc. railroads. So I might consider using some of those. So that's what I'm going to do. The first thing I need to do is um, clean these up here and show you how I'm going to mount these, okay? Okay, so first things first. So what I need to do is I've removed the trucks to get them out of the way. Um, I do have air hoses on here from before, so hopefully I won't break those off while I'm doing this. Um, but we'll just proceed. So what I need to do is, is I need to remove the paint from the bottom of this sill here, like uh, on the bottom end of the frame on this car. See, so just below this ladder. Like the original la or 
stirrup steps. I'll show you how they go. Um, so here's one like that. So they will go like this. Okay. Now there, there isn't a whole lot of material here. That's the problem. <laughs> and here's another problem. Look at this, watch. So there's two layers of plastic here. It's the way the, the model is designed and it splits right here. So if you try to drill, it'll tend to split. There's two pieces. There's the, the subframe and the side of the car. It's kind of bizarre. Actually, you can see it more on this side. See there? Okay, so that, well, look, see that pops right off. That is strange, right? I mean, did they go to the trouble? That's a separate model part. Oh, so you know what that is? That is part of the stirrup piece. Okay. So once that breaks off, it's very similar to the intermount and O-scale ones, which are, I thought were brilliant. They're a separate mount on you add them later at the very end when you build the model. So these are actually quite nice cars, the way they're designed, actually. Anyway, so how do I deal with that? Um, well, there's a couple of ways you can deal with that. I don't really want to pack the inside of this out, but I may have to, so I can use some of this uh, number one, one, two, fifteen thou by forty thou strip, which I have some pieces cut here. Okay, or if you're really, really picky, you can use this ten by forty thou. It's the same width but thinner. But I need something to drill into. Okay, and then I need to scrape the paint off the plastic because I want to get a good bond with the evergreen plastic to the car. So I want to scrape it right down to the raw plastic. And I'm not really worried about it messing up too much here with a little bit of glue over because I'm going to touch this up with an airbrush and the, uh, retouch the bottom of these cars anyway, which I'll probably show as well. So I want to clean these up. There might be some, see there's a, another piece there. See, look, see, see that? So we'll just save those because I might be able to just maybe glue those back in because it'd be good to have that packed out adequately to put the strip on because I'm going to, like I say, scrape that off and then I'm going to take a piece of this and I'm going to glue it on with solvent like that. Okay. Just cut them down a bit so they're flush. And then I got some nice clean plastic and a nice drill plate to put that stirrup into. Okay. I usually give a double dip on the glue, give one to seep in and then one to sort of sit on top. It just works out pretty good. Good old trusty number 11 blade for picking up small parts. And notice the overrun on the part. If you care to cut them uh, to the perfect size, that's fine, but I mean, in the accumulative sense, it seems wasteful, but um, it's just easier for me anyway to handle the part. So I glued those little tiny pieces that fell off. I scraped them and just glued them back in just to give the strip a little more body to glue to. Okay, so now that those are set, I can take these and nip them off. Okay. And then the next task is I've already installed the air hoses, but I have one that needs to be installed right here and I'll show you how I do that. Okay.
Okay, so here's the pack. Once one one more time, number 438 HO scale air hose and angle cocks. Really nice diagram. Um, shows you how you can install them on cars. Comes with different parts. Actually, they're quite good, these. You know, very impressive. I think maybe a lot of people maybe overlook them, but there's enough to do 10 cars, okay? 10 freight cars. So if that's what you're up to, uh, they work really well. So uh, what I'm going to do here is, is um, before I glue this part on, I need to clean this up. Now there was an older one on there, but I'll take that piece off. Make sure you, you scrape the paint off. You can always touch it up later once it's melted on with solvent. And I like to use solvent because it's a better bond than CA. Uh, CA is tempting. I know the th all about CA, <laughs> right? It's a great glue. I have it in my cup, as you see, but I don't use it very often. And if you glue CA, like two painted parts, you should use acrylic, like matte medium or some of the Vallejo resin, because it's a paint. So the paint and the resin will, will meld together with the other painted part. But then you still have the paint as a, as a weak point between the two parts. And if it's not pinned, it's going to get knocked off or fall off eventually. But it'll be fall off even easier if you use CA. At first, CA is really strong. But it dries out and what it does is it creates a blister and pulls away and leaves paint like this eventually stuck to either or on whatever part falls off it might blister here and pull off or it might blister on the part and pull off but ca kind of eats and melts into the paint and it's a different chemical property so it'll decay the paint and it'll just fall off whereas uh, if you use solvent and in this case you can use solvent with these kd um, air hose parts. I just put a little flood in there and then I'm going to come in here like this with the part and I can add the hose later and I'm just going to sorry if my hands are in the way I'm just going to hold that part in place just move it around with my number 11 blade and just for a little extra insurance, put a little bit more on. It'll evaporate away. And then you can see how it's mounted on there nice. All right. Now, I'm going to take one of these air hoses. And just add a little bit of cement. And then drop it in a little bit of an angle like that. Okay. Can you imagine how many stirrups there are in the bottom of vacuum bags? <laughs> so I just want to mention uh, with these little packing out of the stirrup mount points here, you might want to skin the inside with a piece of strip too if you have any blowouts like I've like mine were pretty good I did have one blowout uh, right here I think you can see kind of pulled to the inside so it might have been a good idea to 
pack out the just inside the the sill there so if you have that problem maybe spend the extra time to do that and you should be okay if it's welded up and turns into a good solid styrene block to drill into uh, but for the most part they turned out pretty good you can see how uh, this is a, uh, a 79 thou drill bit I think or 80 I can't remember it doesn't have to be perfect just eyeball it you know to the package uh, at the hobby store if you're looking for a drill bit and uh, they're pretty sturdy little stirrups I mean good luck with them right so uh, let's just put a little bit of cement here slather that up a little bit just to, so that it gets into the hole nice and then I'm going to take the stirrup. Sometimes good old fingers do the job too, right? Um, and then I'm going to give it just a little bit of a slather on top. Push down. And you can see, like, don't they really make a difference, eh? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know they're a pain. <laughs> these things but these cars i'm getting them now you know even though they're from glover road they probably half of them broke off on, during the glover road layout but uh now i'm going to treat them with a little bit more care because i'm going to be building a drawer system to put my cars in that are on and off the layout eventually anyway so i don't have to keep it's the dropping them in and out of packages and handling them generally with your hands that breaks them off these i think might be a little bit better um than the stock original ones but you know it's a nice touch right so we'll finish up this car and then we'll um, do these coupler lift bars okay okay so after thinking this through a bit i think i'm going to save these coupler lift bars for a little bit more modern equipment uh, these old uh ribside box cars um fmc's are they or no what are these ones again they're uh pd box cars um i don't think they had these type of lift bars on them uh frankly um there's a photo not quite sure what that car is but i don't believe they looked as sophisticated as that and these are very nice but i i i have a couple cars for these i think so what i'm going to do is just try to copy this older uh, coupler lift bar on this tangent car see there uh, this is 0 0.015 brass wire and I find if you just try to copy just eyeball it and uh, I've been using these okay just make a right angle bend and then make another right angle bend and a little angle you can always bend them back and forth until you get them right and then i decided to make you know at least half a dozen i only need four just to pick the best four um, i'm not too fussy about these uh really i think once they're mounted and painted they'll be fine um and then i just need to make a little bit of a bend and a return on these for a kind of a handle Like that and then grab it again like that I think they all look good just hook them in like that okay you can see once again using evergreen why i do this and scrape the paint because the bond is incredible it just it's well you melt it it becomes one right so if it takes a hit that's gonna stay but if i use ca on the metal which i probably have to that's the weak link because as i've mentioned before 
CA doesn't have any shear strength. Um, you remember the old commercial, like, I don't know if, uh, like, I know some of the boomers would, the guy with the hanging from the ceiling with the helmet when the super glue first came out uh, and was becoming well known. They showed the guy hanging from the ceiling with his helmet on with a chin strap with super glue. But all you had to do was walk up and push the guy sideways and it would have popped, right? That's sheer. It's got great tensile strength, CA. I mean, they use it for tiles on the, or use it on, for tiles on the space shuttle, right? But, because there's no shear on the space shuttle, it's all tensile pressure. So, that's why it's good, but when it comes to small model parts, it's not very good, because everything is subject to shear when we handle it. For the most part, I mean, right? You're not tugging on the part, you're actually shearing it off. And CA just pops, whereas solvent won't. It'll bend first. Okay, so those are done on there, and then we'll just finish up this other box car and then mount the coupler bars. Okay, so I just want to point out one thing, seemingly insignificant uh, thing here uh, with adhesives, okay? <laughs> here we go again, right? <laughs> Matt Medium, you know I love this stuff. Anyway, um, where these um, coupler lift bars are, I use a little tiny spot of CA there. Now, the problem is with that is if it takes a bump, it just breaks. Like, it just doesn't hold up. So I take a 100%, like, just pure Matt Medium. And I'm just going it, to, it's clear, right? It's transparent, but it's, it has an elasticity to it, a flexibility. And, it, and it's really fine with plastic and metal. It really is. It's just that it won't grab right away like CA, but it's already clamped with CA, right? Use CA to clamp it, like quick bind, boom, and then put a little blob of uh, matte medium over top. Mod Podge would probably even work with this too. And then... Um, it'll hold much better. It'll take a hit. Okay. Time for paint. Once again, this paint is very thin, but the advantage of the airbrush is it atomizes. You can see the bottom where that white plastic is. It atomizes the, the paint pigment so well that it distributes it efficiently and evenly. See how there's a little bit of dark, a little bit of overspray? Just include that in the weathering process. And once again, I've had this car for quite a while, but I just wasn't sure when I was going to get around to fixing these cars. But when I realized that these Atlas cars are about as good as they get for the money, they are really nice. Uh, the older Atlas ones that I've shown before, the ribside box car, or um, uh, what's the version of these cars again? Uh, my mind eludes me at this point. Sorry. Um, they're just excellent cars. They really are. Like uh, the bottom detail on them is second to none. Okay, I just wanted to uh, throw some of this in because I'm sort of touching up these cars and finishing them. I always knew that at some point I would return back to them. You can see the natural light coming in on this one here, um, which I think is kind of cool, but that's kind of more the scale look. Like you almost want to paint that in because it's, cause it'll only happen. See that you change the light. So if you put 
lay out light on a model, see it changes everything, right? See that? There's just no natural light or extra natural light source coming in. Maybe they're LEDs you've had on the layout and it, it, everything changes, right? But the idea is that you paint things that in to a degree. So I've taken some more of the rail brown, which is brown with earth, and then I add more earth to it. And I'm gonna come in and just lightly dust the cars, okay? Now normally my layout isn't under th this kind of lighting, right? So I'm gonna add some of that in, see? Just a light dusting. And then what I'll do is I'll probably, let's move this car out of the way. Probably add just a little bit. A little bit of that uh, more earthy rail dust that seems to accumulate on cars along with other shades of rust. Okay. Just on the top side though. Yeah. And that'll be it. Just very little, right? Okay. And you'll see them on the layout eventually anyway, and it'll all make sense. Okay, I don't normally like to film stuff like this because I like to just blow through it, but <laughs> I think somebody requested it. Uh, Q-tip, right? This is to me a paint airbrush. Q-tip, 99% isopropyl alcohol. Dip it in the alcohol, wick it off a bit so it's not, you don't want to put a big pool on the wheel, right? And then just take it. and turn the wheel like you don't have to take them off the truck you want to clean these off because otherwise it ends up polluting your track right Okay, so this is a good opportunity to uh, just deal with a roof. One of 1,000 ways to do it. <laughs> so, like I say, these cars I worked on, laid some layers on a couple of years ago. So this is, was probably Tamiya with isopropyl alcohol. The weathering was also airbrushed with uh, heavy IPA. And you can see some of the fading. Uh, I may have even touched these with... Um, some Tamiya oil pastels, not pan pastels. These are oil, they're the high grade. They're not the cheapest in the world, but they're really good and they go a long ways. And uh, if you flat coat this, which I will in the end, it'll tone that down a bit. So we bear that in mind, but um, I'm pretty happy with these cars so far, but I want to do the roof a bit. And I want to show you a technique that I also use a kind of removal technique, but I'm going to lay on a layer of this red kind of ruby rust color that I really like. Uh, it's with violet, right? How many times do you buy a bottle of purple when you go to Tamiya? Well, you should have one because you can add it to your rust colors and so on. And it adds a uh, kind of a mauve hint to it that's in just about everything in life. We just don't notice it. We take it for granted. So um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to cut in just a few patches along the tops of these ribs because they get exposed to a lot of sun and heat. I have a reference photo off camera that I don't have handy at the moment. So we'll just cut some of that in and I have lots of, of IPA here and you'll see it come into play when I stay on station longer than I normally do. And I want that. I want airbrush induced patchwork here. Okay.
Good painters are brave painters, meaning if you take risks, if you're brave, you'll learn more and more and more and you'll become a better painter. It's as simple as that. So there are many methods. So you can see here, I, I just have IPA in a cup here and a small little brush. And to get to this stage, this is what I do. I'll take this car first. So I'm gonna drop this, I'm gonna wet this paint. I'm gonna reactivate this to me. I'm just gonna work this side of the car, okay? Cause this is what this car looked like this an hour ago or so. So I'm just gonna wet this, wet this one section here. Now, if I leave this IPA on there, nothing will happen. This IPA will actually, here, let me just move this car over just a bit and move this one over a bit more. So this, nothing will happen to this. However, if, if I come in with a brush and I start to agitate it and move it, watch what happens. I can remove it, see? See that? So I come in here on this side. There's too much. I want to go into the corner there. I'm not going to worry about a pin wash at that point because I can do that last with oils and or Vallejos. So now I can model this. I can stab this. It's more uh, grime on there than I want and I can stipple it like that, see? See how it's starting to change? Okay. So I'm gonna come in here and just lay some IPA, straight IPA. Make sure you're wiping your brush off on a cloth close at hand and then just wet, flood it just like a, a just like a clear, if you want to use the term taco sauce wash, that capillaries, let it capillary into everything. Now when, once again, it's not going to move on its own, you have to move it. So just start, so just think of remove, okay, I want to remove that paint out of there. I'm going to pull that out of there. I'm going to reactivate that paint. And what it's going to do is, is it's going to mix some of these other colors in a way that you would never be able to do manually or think of doing. Right, you let the IPA do that for you, see? And if you want to remove some of this here, but maybe some rust pool down there. So I'll leave that. And just let the, uh, like, let the IPA do a lot of the work for you. Move the brush around. Learn as you go. Be carefree and learn in process. That's how you do it. That's what weathering is. You find methods and, and uh um, different practices that you see around and you try them, you employ them into your skill set until you finally find a particular method that works for you. Now this car it doesn't seem to be turning out the same way this car is. See that? It's different and they always will be different which is unique to this particular method because when you remove the paint and leave it it, like it'll tint and then just let it dry and watch what happens and it'll create an effect that that will actually blow you away in some ways and it's not that hard to do okay you just have fun with it and you can't really make mistakes with it because you're just going to figure it out as you go and uh, you're going to end up with a better roof than you ever had to begin with anyway okay Okay, so I just want to say at this point that if you use pan pastels or, or whatever, well, actually, they all differ. I don't use them. I like, because I find them to be, like, they're not fixed. Like, they're loose media. And they change. Like, they go away. A lot of that effect goes away when you flat coat. But I do use the Tamiya ones, okay? I should show you those too, right? Okay, before I close on this. Okay, so I use these here, the Tamiya Weathering Masters. They're not cheap, but they're just like the quality of their paint through and through. They don't mess around. They, uh, these are like a kind of an oil-based pastel, and uh, I don't use them very much. I probably a 2% of the model or something, or maybe I don't most of the time, but sometimes I will. And I'll use these for highlighting. Like This is the pale orange ivory peach, which I really like. But that's what I use because they're oil-based, right? Or have a type of oil... Uh, base in them 
So I'm just going to paint the top of the car and the sides and collar done because uh, these are runners. Well, even if it was a, a, even if I build a competition locomotive or car or a model, let's say, I'm going to use the uh, this because it's acrylic and I like acrylic. So, an acrylic finish in my experience now is probably one of the hardest finishes, most durable finishes you can ever put on a model. Okay, I know people that are enamel based people aren't going to like that, but I've been there too, and they're good paints, but. This is the system that I use and I like it. And if you find a system, whether it's oil, uh, solvent based or lacquer, whatever, they're all good. Believe me, I'll just say this because they're all good. But you develop a system and then work that system and mature your skill set and painting confidence and stick with it. If that's what you like, that's what you should do. Okay.